All right. Welcome, friends, to the Purpose to Profit Academy, the expert speaker series. And today I am so honored and excited to welcome Christina Etheridge to our show. Christina is the founder of Leads and Leverage, Simple Marketing for Overwhelmed Business Owners. Yeah. And today we're diving deep in discussing email marketing as, I guess, the best way to grow and scale your business, right? Yeah. Christina, welcome. I am so happy you are joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Fantastic. All right, let's dive right in. Do you think email marketing is the most effective way to profitability? Yeah, yeah I pretty much think it's, it, there's all kinds of other things you do, but it's the only way to grow and scale your business. Y you have to have a way to connect with new people through time that doesn't change. And you have to have a way to connect and reconnect with people who've already purchased from you. So there's, it's it's huge. And if you look at every single business on the planet, every business that is successful, they have a database. They have a database and they have a way to connect, and engage with that database. Are they advertising and getting new people? Absolutely. But their core, the way they've grown their business is to build and grow that database. And that's an, e an email list for most of us. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know a lot of entrepreneurs uh, focusing solely on building their businesses on social media. Can you speak more to social media versus building your email list? Yeah, so uh, social media is a pathway. It is not, you don't own it. So, um, it, I mean, it really comes down to rent versus own. Um, social media is, is a, a path that you, a tool that you can use, but you rent it. And in fact, in most cases, you don't actually rent it. It's free and you have no say. Um, reach, the, the best reach you could possibly get on average is about 1.1%. So 1%, which is usually Instagram, uh, TikTok's a slightly higher at about 1.5%. So that means that of the people that are that follow you on those platforms, out of a thousand of them, you're going to get like, I mean, out of a hundred, no, out of a thousand of them, sorry, get the math right. Out of a thousand of them, you're going to get one. Like, so, so, an, or meaning that's, that's the percentage that you're going to get of people right. actually getting your stuff. And, and you don't control how many times they see you. You don't control how often or when or what they see, the order that they see it in, et cetera. So it really is a rent versus own. Social media is a great, great funnel to get people into your email list. You own your email list. Even um, even if like MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever, if they say you can't send via there, you still have your email list in a spreadsheet. You could still send it via Google. You could still like, you have to follow all your country rules. Like, like, let me be very aware. You have to follow whatever rules are in your country, but you still own the list. You physically have that stuff. So absolutely, it's a totally now, different ball game. Absolutely. And I 100% agree with you. Um, I had like, a, one of my platforms was hacked, and all of my following was like yes. gone in a day. So yes. I completely resonate with what yes. you say. You know? well, and you can't drive, you can't without an email list or a way to contact those people, you can't drive them to your new profile or a different platform or a different. But one thing I forgot, you know, the best reach is about one and a half percent. The worst open rates, if you have the worst open rates in the world at 10%, 1% versus 10%, that's the worst. Average, industry averages are about 20%. So it's a huge different, it is it's leaps difference. and bounds better. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I hear a lot of entrepreneurs say that the email list is dead. <laughs> Of course, email marketing. Yeah, you hear that here yeah. and there and everywhere. What are your thoughts about that? Why well, they're trying to they're trying to sell you something. Perception? They're trying to sell you something. They're trying to sell you something. I've been um, using email marketing since 1995, long before most people had email, um, and I've used it for all kinds of industries. And starting in 2000, um, right about when Google and if you remember Ask Jeeves. Um, 
you might be younger, um, <laughs> Yahoo. Anyway, it, it was the different search engines. The minute we really started having card catalogs for the internet. So if you're my age, you probably know what a card catalog is. If you're not, it's a search engine for a library. But <laughs> it's um, about 2000 is when we started to hear the email marketing is dead. And I, you hear this all the time, constantly, constantly. And what's ironic is we heard it, we, it got louder and louder and louder up until 2020. Um, what happened in 2020? Pandemic. Yep. How did the pandemic affect email marketing? It's because everybody was at home and people were trying to reach their people. And that's when people realized, oh, social platforms are limiting reach on whatever they decide to limit reach on. Doesn't matter if you're political or religious or controversial or not, they're going to decide what to limit reach on. And the way people were reaching their people was email. And so email since 2020, it, it kind of stagnated as far as people thought stagnated, it's exploded. Cause there's this whole, you know, oh, the younger generation doesn't use email, blah, blah, blah. I am just to reveal age, I am 52 and I have four boys ages 20 to 27 who quote unquote, don't use email. <laughs> the minute they they literally, they're like, well, um, we they were doing something and I'm like, I thought you didn't use email. He's like, well, I use it for when I wanna buy these kinds of things. Or when I want to find these kinds of things, I'm like, so you do use email. He's like, well, I, I, I all of them like, well, I guess we do just differently. So all generations use email. Absolutely. Absolutely. So email marketing said they're usually trying to sell you a social program. Got it. Yeah. Or messenger program or text program or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, in your view, what is the best way to build your list? I've heard about different strategies, but in your view, what what, what is the most effective one? Um, the most effective way is to actually focus on building it. I know that's going to be so, that's so non-tangible. If you believe that the best way to get somebody to buy from you is to connect with them, then everything you do, all roads need to lead through your email list. So there's all kinds of ways you can build your email list. There's some that are more effective than others. There are many that are similarly effective, but depending on the kind of business you are, the goal is to think of your connection with somebody you don't know in micro steps. So you don't know them. So whatever it is, whether they're online or you're at a business event where you have a booth for like your chamber of commerce, it doesn't matter. They don't know who you are. You're here advertising your goods. And the best way to get people to go from casually walking by your booth or casually searching your website is to offer them something that gets them onto your email list. And then you build and grow that relationship later. But th that's the whole goal. I usually see people going right for the jugular right for a sale, right for this. And the bigger your sale is, the longer your roadway is. And you need to bring them in through micro steps. If you've got a $7 item, okay, so me, Facebook, if I'm scrolling Facebook and there are really funny t-shirts, I'm I'm the person that you can grab by the jugular with a really funny t-shirt. I will just, I'll buy it because it's under 30 bucks. It's a no brainer. That's a funny t-shirt. I'm going to buy it. You don't need to take me on a pathway for that product. But if you want me to buy your $5,000 coaching program or a $500,000 house, you need to take me on a journey. And the way to do that is to bring people into your email list. Now, the way an, a t-shirt company could do it, obviously, is I buy one funny t-shirt, they put me on their email list, and then they start sharing other funny t-shirts, right? So there's always, that's how you do that. You don't want to just keep relying on um, email in general. I mean, uh, ads in general. But anyway... You need to get people on your list and you need to be thinking micro step. What's the next micro step to getting that person to do X, Y, Z? Yeah. I can go into that more if you want. Yeah, yeah. yes, please. So um, I guess the most traditional way for entrepreneurs to grow their um, list is to offer something of value, right? A, a yes. free opt-in. And it worked for me. It works for others. Now, after they offer that free opt-in and people of uh, clients, potential clients sign up, how do you nurture that relationship after that? Well, there's 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 two pieces to this. The first one is your basically your opt-in sequence. So when somebody opts into your list initially, you got to deliver the thing that you told them you'd give them. That's that's first and foremost. And you just want to be quick about that and, and give it to them right away. Don't make them go through hoops. Don't tell them all about you. 
honestly, they don't care about you. They care about the freebie, the thing that, that got them on there, right? Um, and then you want to go, okay, what would be the next micro problem or micro step that they have? So um, let's, uh, as an example, I volunteer for a regional professional theater. Um, and of course, I volunteer in the marketing realm. I'm on the board. I help with the marketing, et cetera, because that's my expertise. And one of the things we do is the, it's an, it's easy for a theater if they're at events and stuff to say, hey, we're doing a drawing for free tickets. That's an easy opt-in. Um, but the minute we, you know, every single event we go to, we give away free tickets and then we have all these names and et cetera. So depending on the event, tells us which pathway we're gonna take these people down. So if they're businesses or they're people that we know would probably wanna advertise in the programs or maybe sponsor the theater, there's one pathway. If it's a, a thing like it's a homeschool event or it's a whatever, um, something to do with lots of kids and stuff, then we have our uh, training institute. That's a different pathway. So the key is, is you have to know who the people are that are opting in. That's first of all. And second of all, um, you've got to give them what they opted in for. And then third, you got to connect with them and resonate and, and communicate with them. And so I can put all those people together into one bundle and have a once a week, here's what's happening. Here's what's going on. Here's what you might have missed. Here's what we're doing. Because some of these people turn into volunteers the kids. Some of the kids have parents who have businesses. Some of the businesses have kids. So you want to make sure that there is something that's happening once a week that is just all about connecting with your people. It's just a connection. It's just a, um, here's for the theater. Here's the ways you can get involved. Here's what we're doing this week. Um, here's the funny things we experienced, et cetera. So it's just a way to really get their mind around who the theater is. Um, so they're aware. And then you have the different pathways. Here's how to sponsor. Here's what the sponsors say when they sponsor. Here's how they benefited. Remember, it's all about them, right? Here's the kids. The kids loved this thing. The kids love musical theater Fridays. They love doing this, et cetera. So it's, you have the one key, which is connection, but then these pathways get them to take action based on who they are and what they've done. Absolutely. That. Speaking to the also interests and problems of your target client, right? Yes. You're offering solution in a in the way that connects you and him or her, right? The, the yes. client in the most authentic way. Yes. Now, um, how often is too often to email? Is it like once a day, three times a day, once a month, once a week? Right. Um, so you know what's really funny about this question? Um <clears throat> That's actually the wrong, it's not the wrong question. It's the opposite. Um, the data over billions and billions and billions and billions of emails um, shows that you can email too infrequently, but you can't email too frequently. Mm. So it hurts if you email less than once a week. People don't remember who you are, why they're subscribed to your list. They're out of touch. And so if you email less than once a week, you're going to see more unsubscribes, more report to spams, a, a lower deliverability rate. However, there are people and lists that email once a day, sometimes twice a day. I'm not saying you should do all of that because you have to make sure that what you're emailing is what they want to get, but you can't email too much if it's what they want us to have, but you can email too little. Mm -hmm. So isn't that, Makes sense. Yeah. that I, typically with people, especially with um, small business owners or um, entrepreneurs who are just kind of solopreneurs or they have a small team, I recommend once a week at minimum. That's what I recommend. It's sustainable. It's doable. And then as you go up and you build your team, you could do twice a week. If you have the right content and you find people are, yeah, they're liking my emails. I can send a little bit more. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, now, when we talk about freebies or opt-ins, right, what's the best format that kind of converts or give more, more value? Is it like videos or just a simple PDF? Is there, are there any like statistics on that? Yeah. there. Is, so um, the format is kind of irrelevant. Um, the format it depends totally on your people. So mm -hmm. if you're a YouTuber and your people watch YouTube, I'd want to opt them in with a video of some sort. If you're a homeschool mom and your people 
really dive into the paper homeschool stuff, like things related to paper, I'd want to give them something that they could print or do. So it's really the format is related to who you're trying to attract. Um, so, and, and it's, it's irrelevant in the sense that there is no better or worse. It's how your people tend to consume. And if you don't know how they tend to consume, um, then that's where I would go into something, th the shorter, the simpler, the easiest to consume and get a win out of it, the better. So our the, the key is that our opt-ins do not need to be lengthy or complicated. If they're multiple email sequences, if they're long videos, if they're eBooks, nobody's going to want them. Nobody's going to consume them. They might download them, but they're not going to consume them. And your goal with an opt-in is to get people to consume it. You need them to consume it because when they consume it, they get a taste of you. They get a taste of your business. They get a taste of how you teach, how you do things, et cetera. And so you need them to consume it. So your goal is to get them to consume it. So in theory, the shortest way that they can get a win, the better. Absolutely. The better. Yeah. So What's the best way to nurture your new leads, right? Are there any strategies to that? Yeah. Um, it, you really need to be real. Um, right. and like really real, like you need to have conversations with them. You need to focus on them as an individual who's standing right in front of you that you're kind of going back and forth. A lot of times I see a lot of broadcasting and speaking at instead of com conversating with, um, and that's a big deal with nurturing and consistently you need to show up consistently. And I have been known to not show up consistently. Like that is, that is my downfall. I am not consistent in showing up. Um, and so I, that that's where I, other people are very consistent in showing up, but all they do is speak at. Um, so you really have to really engage. And I know there's this whole big thing about pre-writing 52 weeks of emails and all that kind of stuff. You can do that. However, on the fly, if you happen to be, I don't know, um, going to Paris and people see you on social media going to Paris and your email that week that they're getting is about you being in California um, or a, a story from California. They're like, wait, what? They're going to know that you're not actually communicating with them on a real, like a, a, a real time basis. And it's important that they feel that. So be careful with the pre-writing and make sure it's it's real. real, it's authentic, it's coming from you, yeah. it's coming from your heart, it's really like real life stories and yeah. like being even even being vulnerable on email, yes. really opening your heart actually sometimes converts more than just like, you know, yeah. sharing content just for educational purposes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and 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 sharing your journey and and what's going on. There, there's a couple things that I've done recently. One was like, hey, I've never participated in um, I was sharing that I've never participated in a bundle before. And so I was like, do you guys know what a bundle is? Um, have you done it? Have you not? And so I just started com com I'm convers conversating, conversing with my list about what a bundle is, what it looks like, what I'm doing, what I'm discovering, what I'm finding. Well, clearly I don't have experience in being part of a bundle. So I'm not, it's not hurting my reputation but it's sharing that I'm part of this journey and, oh, you have this piece. Oh, you don't have this piece. Oh, people don't know about this or anyway. So that's not like vulnerable as in like, oh, I'm going through a divorce or, or whatever. Like you don't, you don't need to be that kind of vulnerable. You can be, that's your audience, but you don't need to be. Mm -hmm. You just need to share people, share your journey with people so that people are aware. Oh, she's learning too, or he's learning too. Mm -hmm. um, and you can be that way and still be, a pillar of knowledge absolutely in your industry beautiful thank you for sharing that now when it comes to call to actions do mm -hmm. you have your favorites that mm -hmm. actually you know make people click through your emails <laughs> that it really again it, it everything is so nuanced um with whatever you're doing but you've got to be very direct right. that's the best you have to be direct you have to tell people what to do we are a nation in the U.S., depending on where you're watching this, but in the U.S., we're a nation of people who say we don't like to be told what to do, right? So we say that, we put our, our stake in the ground, do not tell me what to do, but we're a nation that does 
what we're told to do when we're told to go buy this beer because this is what's going to happen if you buy this beer, right? Or drink this beer. Um, I know that's a weird example, but that's why there are commercials of quote unquote, sexy men and women in bars drinking beer when we all know that drinking beer does not make us sexy. So it's, we know this, but then we re relate it. So when it comes to a call to action, you have to tell people exactly like why they want to click and to click. Mm -hmm. click here hit reply and a lot of my things that I do I tell them what to do so if it's a hit reply I say I say hit reply and say got it if you got this they don't have to think about the words to say do they have to say got it no 99 times out of 100 they say got it mm -hmm. and they hit reply so they do the action because I made it simple for them to do that action, but you got to tell them exactly what to do. It's, it's really, really funny um, that we're so don't tell me what to do. And then, Oh, we do what we're told to do. It's just really funny. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. So what do you think uh, like, you know, entrepreneurs in their first or second year of business, uh, what is their like major mistake when it comes to audience growth and what would you recommend them do instead? <laughs> Um, usually, so I'm going to assume first or second year that they've gotten a little business, they're starting to feel comfortable and they're like, oh, okay, this is good. This is working. They usually stop list building. That's usually their mistake. They start going, they do this stuff that gets them to that point, And then they start going, oh, I need to focus on this. And they stop focusing on what got them to that point. That's usually what happens. Um, and so you have to have it in your head that you never stopped list building. You never stop list building. That has to be a priority. It has to stay a priority um, all through. Otherwise you will stagnate and you will die. Because if you're not growing faster than the industry in which you're in is growing, you're actually shrinking. Mm -hmm. So it's it, that's usually what happens. Year one or two, they've stopped list building. They come to this plateau. They can't figure out what's next. They think they need a bigger team. They think they need another product, but they're so busy focusing on um, either uh, another product or maybe they're taking too much out of their business as far as money and they haven't amped, ramped up their ads uh, and they're to, to compensate for the fact that they no longer have the time to do the organic stuff. They need to balance it out with more paid stuff. So, or they don't hire a person and they take more money out. Like it's really, they, they've stopped list building. Absolutely. Yeah. In my experience um, to me, there are three ways to build um audience right mm -hmm. to grow our audience is organic where you use social media you talk to people one-on-one -on -one, right the second one is borrowed audiences right mm -hmm. so and to me that's like the the most effective way of uh, list building and the mm -hmm. third one is paid right like mm -hmm. paid ads yep. that one is a little expensive but if you know your budget allows go ahead if organic borrowed and bought from those three what would you recommend for people um usually you have to start out hoofing it yourself like mm -hmm. because you don't know people you don't have a reputation in the industry you don't have any connections with people who would be willing to share their audiences with you in, in whatever way this this is a shared audience in the fact that it's a summit or a bundle or speaking in other people's memberships or speaking for their courses or on stage or anything like that. That's all in that in that borrowed element. But you've got to start somewhere. So you're going to have to start organic. You're going to have to start kind of hustling and hoofing it that way. Um, and then obviously you want to leverage borrowed audiences. And this isn't even in the affiliate marketing range. This is just connecting with other people, getting in front of other people's audiences, et cetera. Paid ads enhance what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. So th they're literally the catapult. So once you've got all of this going, there's only so much time you can exchange to be in front of other people's audiences. You've got to use paid ads to leverage that. So it literally just enhances what you're already doing. So you've got to make sure the, the hoof in it and the sharing audiences works for you, that people are actually opting into your stuff, that they're actually doing some upsells on your stuff, that that process is working and then you put money behind it. And you keep doing this, but you put money behind it. So it's it's just an enhancement. So I kind of feel like that's the order. Sometimes some people come into the business where they've been maybe not online or they've been behind the scenes expert that a lot of people know, and then they can immediately get in front of an audience. But most of the time people come from offline um, in a world where people don't know them as well online. So they kind of have to start the organic way. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. Now, what is like the the best um, takeaway from our conversation? What what is your like the major advice for someone who is scaling their business, right? Um, in terms of email marketing. Uh, well, it, you got to build the list. Uh, so many people who have a business have gotten so far because they're like, well, Instagram's done me well and I don't need anything else. You will forever be stuck mm -hmm. where you're at. No matter what you do, where you go, you will not grow like you want to grow. You have to have a list. So, and if you're just starting out, start a list now. A lot of people are like, uh, I don't know when to start a list now. Like if you have any idea of the topic or generality of where you're going to be doing, start that list. Just start gathering the list and start um, getting people on that list. You need a list. That's the thing. And never stop focusing on building that list. It's like a lot of people are like, oh, I got my first hundred people. I got my first thousand. I got my first 10,000. Usually at the 25 to 5,000 point when they get that many people, they tend to back off. Because they're like, oh, I'm good. I'm gro I'm growing. No, you need to keep going. You need to keep doing this. And really just, that's really what it is. You've got to start a list immediately. You've got to start talking to that list and you've got to keep growing that list. That is, that's key. That's key to any growth, any business. I've been in multiple, multiple industries on my own and so many different other industries helping and coaching. And it's, that is, it's the key. That's why businesses fail. They don't have a list of buyers. Absolutely. They don't have a list of people to bring in. They always say it's it's um capital. Businesses fail because of lack of capital. No, businesses fail because of a lack of cash flow. They started because of capital, but they couldn't get enough sales. Why couldn't they get enough sales? Because they didn't have a list that they controlled to get people to buy stuff. Right. Anyway, yeah. yeah. You need audience, you need clients, you need customers. You do. Right? You need people. Yes, you need, you need people, people in front of you. Buy from you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Christina, are there additional resources that you can offer to everyone watching this and recording? How can people work with you? Oh, yeah. So, um, well, there's a couple of ways, but for this specific um, program, I actually put together the email marketing quick start roadmap. And it's really, it's just a, a few steps and things that you can do to move forward. So like I give full details of the notes for this session. I give the step-by-step -step process on how to start a list, how to get going, et cetera. I give a perfect email template, how to shape your emails, when to send your emails and quick content ideas and stuff like that. So there's stuff in there. So you shouldn't have any, like, I don't know what to write, or I don't know when to send it, or I, you shouldn't have any of those roadblocks. So it's in the email marketing quick start roadmap that I put together. Um, for you guys. Amazing. Yeah. That sounds incredible. That sounds so valuable. Um, and I will be linking this, uh, this product yes. underneath this video and also Christina's um, contact information as well, your credentials, your website, and um, your social media. Let's yes. add that yes. there too. Yeah. Wonderful. Any final words to our people watching this video? You know, the biggest thing is that um, don't overcomplicate yeah. Any of this. Don't overthink it. 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 It's it it really is a matter of you going typing an email, sending it out, and just making sure you're doing that constantly. Just like you would call a friend or text a friend or well, text a friend, you wouldn't, but text a friend, um, message a friend, whatever. That's really what you're doing and making sure that you're almost oversharing what's happening, what's going on, what's available, et cetera. So letting people know. Uh, people can't buy when they don't know what to buy or when they don't what you they don't know what you have to sell they don't what you have available they don't know who you are they want to see who you are not be told who you are and you you show them who you are through your actions through the emails that you put out they read between the lines so you need email to build relationships with people so that they know like and trust you so that when you have something to sell them buy they just <laughs> click the buy button Absolutely. That's and I love your simple advice. Don't overcomplicate things. Don't. Think yeah. that easily. You know, it's simple communication from your heart to theirs, you know, yep. sharing value, giving value and offering value and exchange of value. I mean, you know, selling yep. is all about value exchange, right? Yes. Yes. 
yeah, it, it's got to be easy. Christina, it was such a pleasure connecting with you on email, you. marketing, list building. It's key. A lot of people say, well, my business is not growing. Well, your email, like first, they don't have an email list. Second, yep. It's not growing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They're jumping the gun and trying to sell right away or yeah, it's, it's really just get people on that list. They have to be the right people, but get people on your way. I mean, if you're a homeschool mom and you're selling homeschool curriculum, you need other homeschool moms to buy your stuff. You don't need dentists buying your stuff, right? Like on your list, you need homeschool moms on your list. So it's, you got to make sure you have the right people on your list and you're going for the right people. So it's not just throw everybody on there, but you got to have them on there. You got to have them on there so you can talk with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. It was yeah, such a thanks. pleasure, Christina. Thank you so much for your time today, for sharing your wisdom. I am so yeah. excited to share your beautiful uh, product and your contact information with anyone who wants to work with you further. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you.